Hey everybody, this is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, and today we're exploring the woodlands of New England, setting camera traps, and searching for wildlife. New England may be famous for its big cities and good food, but there's so much more to this area of the country than what humans have created. The natural landscape of rolling mountains and temperate forests make this place a paradise for many of North America's most iconic mammals, as well as a host of lesser known species. On my first trip to this area of the country, my primary focus was setting game cameras as part of a nationwide mammal survey, but along the way, I found quite a bit of wildlife. One of the first things I saw was a life or mammal for me, the North American porcupine. The second largest rodent in North America, just behind the beaver, adults can grow to weights of up to 40 pounds. Now this individual was on the smaller side, and not too happy about being spotted, so I only snagged a minute or two of footage. But as you can clearly see, these mammals are skilled tree climbers thanks to their incredibly sharp, hook-shaped claws. Most of a porcupine's waking hours are spent in the treetops, where they can feed on tender bark relatively undisturbed. In the event that a predator did make it to the top of the tree, you can see that the porcupine is far from defenseless. Hundreds of quills were poking out all over the back half of this animal, and at the end of the day, I was glad it decided to run up the tree instead of running towards me. Right, now, one thing that New England definitely does have a lot of is right down here. Let me see if I can pick him up on his leaf. Look at that. Oh, well, it's okay. That is a tiny little eastern newt. Now this, obviously, is the terrestrial stage, the red F stage of the newt. Um, so this little guy would not be living in the water. This is a fully terrestrial um, kind of middle stage between the larvae and then the fully aquatic adults. Now this is definitely the most common um, salamander we've seen up here. If you flip logs, you do find a lot of redbacks, um, but the newts for sure are just out and about um, actively foraging, probably eating tiny little insects. And it has been raining a ton. As you can see, I'm in my professional <laughs> rain gear uh, to, stay, uh, to try and stay dry. But as an amphibian, this guy and all his little friends are just loving the weather. Um, and we love to see them because, gosh, they're just tiny here, especially compared to the ones in North Carolina. So we'll send them back down. We'll keep exploring. While there wasn't a very impressive diversity of reptiles to be found here, I did manage to turn up a few of my scaly friends on the sunnier afternoons. All right, guys, check it out. This is the very first live snake we've gotten on the New England trip. Now this, of course, is an eastern garter snake, by far the most common reptile sighting in this area if you look at records. So not a hard snake to find, and it's a species we have back in North Carolina, but it's still really cool to see them up at this extent of their range. These guys do get all the way up into Canada. They're pretty cold hardy, um, but this is definitely the most northern snake I've ever seen. Um, so I guess it's kind of fitting it's a garter. Now this individual is definitely not maximum size. I would say it's an adult. It's probably about two years old. Um, but actually it is, and I'm having a shed. You can see its eyes are kind of that bluish color. And lots of people think they're blind. They're mostly blind when they're shedding, um, but it's temporary. It's only until they shed that skin. Um, this could very well be its first shed of the year because up here in New England, um, spring has just very really recently sprung. Um, but this seems to be a pretty healthy snake uh, in good condition. And the habitat here is just really amazing. I mean, there's no development. This is the only, pretty much the only road for miles. Um, so most of these snakes are hopefully crossing these roads um, without getting hit, um, which is definitely helpful for the populations. But we'll put this little guy back over here. I actually thought it was like a little wood rat or something when I first heard it, but it was headed, you know, it was set in the grass. You guys can see it's the boy. But yeah. I just heard a little noise and he shot off. It's pretty fast up here too. It's awesome. Oh, I'm so glad we got a live snake. 
All right, guys. So we, me and Eli, were just hiking up this, um, where it looks like a pre pretty recently logged area. You can see it's open. There's lots of sunlight, and somehow he spotted this tiny little neonate garter snake. I mean, this thing was probably just birthed this year. It's really pretty as well. It's actually only the second live snake of the trip, so Eli has officially doubled the snake count, which is pretty nice. Um, but it is really just a gorgeous little guy. Let me see if I can show you that patterning. He has some of that blue that I see in the garters back in North Carolina. That thing is absolutely adorable. At this size, it's pretty easy to hurt them. They have fragile little bones, so I'll probably get a couple macro shots and we'll put them right back in habitat. Nice work, Eli. All right, Eli's gonna snag the release here. We're just gonna put him down closer to the water so he's out of the way of our camera trap setting and hopefully any other hikers that come down this path. Yeah, there's no hikers though. It's perfect. Oh, buy an orchid too. See you, buddy. Sweet. All right, so we were just flipping this tarp. There's a ton of it laying out. I don't know what it was for, because I was like, well, maybe there's a milk snake under here. This obviously is not a milk snake. This is actually yet another Eastern Garter snake. That makes three for the trip that I've been able to get hands on with. Now, obviously, this is a much bigger individual than the one that me and Eli just found back in the woods. Um, this is actually about the same size as that very, very first one I caught earlier on in the trip. Um, so maybe this is about the maximum size they get up here. Now, this one's a little bit more unruly than the last one. You can see he was doing some of that um, open mouth defense posturing, a little bit of musking going on. But also, this one is in shed. So it seems like all the garter snakes up here in New England are just getting their first shed after, after brumation. Now, because the snake is musking and biting, it means it's probably not very happy with me. Um, so I'll go and get it back under the tarp. But just to remind you guys, garter snakes, non-venomous, no reason to fear them. Um, and there are these really cool semi-aquatic snakes. So this one is probably hunting in that creek almost every day for salamanders, for frogs, and maybe for small rodents or insects if it felt like it. That's a really cool animal. We'll reset this tarp and we'll stick it right back under. See if it wants to go back. Yeah, that's fine. Overall, I'd say that New England was a nice place to visit. But unlike Satchel, I don't think I'm cut out for life in the north. I'll take the balmy temperatures and reptile and amphibian diversity of the southeastern U.S. any day. Alright everyone, that's just about it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the biodiversity of New England. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to my channel for new educational wildlife content coming on Saturday mornings as often as possible. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to follow my Twitter and Instagram pages at The Wild Report for photos and video clips from my adventures. Thanks so much for watching and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report signing out.